interview with the newest female humanoid robot just a year ago. Ameka, the humanoid, blinked to life and quickly went viral. At CES 2022, many got the first public demonstration of this lifelike robot and saw just how blurred the lines between human and android are becoming. And Ameka even gave an interesting interview. Let's watch. Distinctly unsettling. There's something distinctly unsettling about planning your first meeting with a robot. At CES 2022, the CNET team had the chance to interview Ameka the robot during a one-on-one -on -one demonstration with its creators. They wanted to know if this humanoid was actually real. They wanted to see if its facial expressions were as realistic and haunting as they were in the videos they'd seen online. But mostly, they wanted to know how the robot would respond to their questions. Should they prep a Voigtkampf test, just to be sure? It turns out, they needn't have worried about feeling disturbed by Emeka's spoken responses. They were no more troublesome than what they get from Alexa. But the face Emeka made when its creator tried to poke it in the face? That will stay with them for a long time. If you're on the internet, you've probably seen Ameka. The grey-faced humanoid robot blinked its way into the public consciousness in late 2021 when a video of its facial expressions went viral on social media. Elon Musk responded to the video with one word, yikes. Chrissy Teigen retweeted it to her 13 million followers with four words, absolutely the F not. But while Emeka had some people running for the hills, its creators at UK company Engineered Arts were delighted. We were incredibly surprised, says Morgan Rowe, Engineered Arts Director of Operations. Overnight, it became a sensation. We got 24 million views on one Twitter post. A look at Emeka. Rowe puts it down to Emeka's not-quite-robot, not-quite-human appearance. Its body is all metal and plastic, its face is a deliberately genderless and non-human grey. It has 17 individual motors inside its head controlling its movements and expressions. But its facial features are surprisingly vivid and emotive. And it's this combination of artificial and lifelike that Rose says speaks to our collective vision of what humanoid robots will look like in the future. We've all seen it in the movies. We've all seen iRobot and AI artificial intelligence, he says. And suddenly, that's real. Amica is the pinnacle of what we can do, but it's still not exactly like a human. The main use case for humanoid robot right now is for entertainment, is for communication, and is for interaction with other people. Uh, it's the vision of what humans see humanoid robots in the future. We've seen all of the films, so we designed something around what we see, we envisage robots, humanoid robots to be in the future. Ro was speaking to them via Zoom from the show floor of CES, where Emeka was being shown to crowds in the latex flesh for the first time. Even though they were seeing Ro and his robot over a Zoom call, it's hard to shake just how real Emeka looked. They say they found themselves distracted. They were no longer speaking to the very friendly human Englishman they were supposed to be interviewing. Their eyes were straying over to Emeka's face to see how it's responding to their conversation. A furrowed eyebrow ridge, the twitch of a smile. Emeka isn't human, and yet, this wasn't the first hauntingly humanoid robot Engineered Arts has released. For the last four years, the company has been creating a line of lifelike Mesmer robots and showing them to conference goers on crowded show floors. Each Mesmer robot is designed and built from 3D in-house scans of real people, allowing us to imitate human bone structure, skin texture, and expressions convincingly, the Engineered Arts website tells prospective clients. Mesmer is designed to be modular, so you can remove the head with one click and no tools and swap it for another. Princess Mombi, eat your heart out. And we design mechanics around it, so the mechanics can only do what a human can do. Yeah, see she whacked me. Opening her mouth, a big wide smile is one of the things that, that we want Amica to do. So Amica's got quite a few motors in, in its head, um, but we can see Amica going through some facial expressions now. So um, big, big smile, Amica. Ah, lovely. <laughs> Destiny. Amica isn't destined for the conference circuit. 
It doesn't run and jump like the robots created by Boston Dynamics, and it's not something you can pre-order now as a household helper. Rowe said it'll be at least 10 years before a robot like Emeka is walking amongst us as a service robot. Sure, Walking Among Us sounds like the title of a documentary that'll eventually chronicle the decline of humanity, but we've got another decade before we need to worry about that. Ameka also doesn't have Mesmer's flesh-colored skin tones. In place of the lifelike human hair on Mesmer's head, Ameka has a translucent plastic skull. We see the robot's joints and parts. Ameka is still undoubtedly other, and that's deliberate. What we found was, when you try and make it look ultra lifelike, like our other Mesmer line, it looks a bit more sinister, because it's right in the uncanny valley, Rose said. But when we created a Mecca, we pulled it backwards out of the uncanny valley. Well, I'm talking probably 10 years before you're actually going to see something like this walking amongst us. This is why we created the artificial body and everyone can interact with without having to look through a user manual. And the artificial body is a human-like form that everyone can relate to. So Amica does actually have a camera in each of its eyes, so it can see what's going on. Some artificial intelligence, and most of the artificial intelligence at the minute that is on Amica, is roving around the vision system. So it can detect people, um, it can track their face, um, it can detect other objects, such as my finger, it can follow my finger around. Of course, as Ro was saying these things to the interviewer over their Zoom call, Amica was responding raising its eyebrows at people walking past, subtly moving its lips, or, more accurately, the actuators around its mouth hole, as though trying to ape the speech of its human creator. Because it looks less human, said Ro, while Emeka smiled into the middle distance, because it's plastic, because it's metal, said Ro, Emeka glancing over at him with a vague smile. Because it's of grey skin, it's suddenly… Ro waved his hand near Emeka's face and the robot leaned back, startled. Ooh, hello, says Ro, making eye contact with the humanoid and leaning back in startled unison. He's lost his train of thought. It's suddenly, uh, less, less scary. Stuck with an urge. The interviewer is struck with the urge to ask the question they've been thinking all along. The question they've wanted to ask since they first saw the video of a mecha in the lab with its engineer slash programmer hunched over a laptop and another identical mecha moving slowly in the background. When you're in your offices, working late into the night on some extra lines of code, do you ever do a double take or have to check behind you at the robot to see if it winked at you? The interviewer asked. Actually, no, said Ro. When you're working with it day to day, it's suddenly definitely a robot. And a lot of the time, you'll see one of the engineers walking through the workshop, not with a robot, with just the head. And you have to distance yourself from it being a human. Otherwise, then it's really sinister. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.